In our second video today, we're going to talk a lot about Neanderthals and Cro-Magnons. Both are considered Homo sapiens, but Neanderthals are a little bit lesser form of the modern human. And uh, remember, they were smaller, but they were thicker and more compact. They were built for cold weather climates. The big thing I want you to know is why did they uh, end up in competition with Cro-Magnons for food sources? And think about how they used their environment to do what they needed to do. Then I want to talk, uh, make sure that you focus on how did humans spread around the world? And which theory do you think was probably the best? There's a really good video on YouTube that I have linked on the webpage to, uh, to help you out. Okay, uh, good luck with this video. We'll see you at the end. Okay, so here's the SOL for today. And uh, again, we're talking about the Paleolithic period and uh, how it's going to lead to the development of the agricultural revolution and the start of civilizations and uh, agricultural villages. So today what we're going to be primarily focused on is two groups of Homo sapiens, or the, the start of us, uh, Cro-Magnon and Neanderthals. And we're going to talk about how the development of these two groups is going to lead to uh, better societies and the, the inventions of technologies, which will eventually allow us to discover agriculture and to settle into permanent settlements. Okay, so one of the first things I want you to understand is that women uh, had more power in some of these societies because gathering was a much more reliable way of getting food than hunters and than hunting. So uh, many of these cultures or, or clans worshipped their women and uh, the idea that they were also the providers of life by having babies. So many of the re religions centered around women being the center point. For example, many of these societies uh, had women as their chief goddess or earth mother. This is called sympathetic magic. And uh, this fertility statues, cave drawings, all reflected things of their life. So women having more power was certainly tied to them being able to get them more food and then having babies. Cool cave drawings too. Okay, so Homo sapiens. About 250,000 years ago, the first Homo sapiens emerged. Homo sapiens means wise person or thinking man. And uh, this group is split into two very distinct groups. Neanderthals and Cro-Magnons or Homo sapiens sapiens, modern humans. Uh, in terms of brain size, very, very similar. But Cro-Magnons were probably definitely superior. Neanderthals were discovered in the Neander Valley of Germany. And... Uh, we're already into Turkey and uh, Europe between 100 to 30,000 years ago. Uh, this group was built for cold weather climates. They're like the primary reason that we uh, have a good idea about how humans adapt to their climate and their environment. And this group of people, as you'll see in the video, uh, had larger noses. They were shorter, but they were thicker, had thicker, stronger bones, and their, their surface area was warmer and they had to have that to survive in the cold climate. We know they used stone tools, they buried their dead, we think they had primitive religious beliefs. Uh, now how did they die out? That's an interesting question. We know they were in direct contact with some tribes of Cro-Magnon, but there is also evidence that they may have been genetically breeded out. So some of them were killed probably, and then others, their genes weren't superior enough. The glaciers of Europe not only shaped the landscape, but the features of the Neanderthals who lived here. Their bones grew strong in direct response to the stress they were subjected to. The walls of Neanderthal leg bones are particularly thick. Joints around the elbow, hip, and knee are also enlarged. Shaped by the habitual pressure of living life as a Neanderthal, they also show signs of bowing. Seen in contrast to the modern leg beside it, Neanderthal bones are not just thick and bowed, they're much shorter than our own. Short, heavy bodies reduce the skin's surface area, helping to maintain a high body temperature. Even their noses evolved to cope with the extreme cold weather. 
Their nasal cavities are larger than our own and contain extra capillaries and mucus to warm and moisturize the air, preventing damage to fragile internal tissue. This combination of features makes Neanderthals the first human species specifically adapted to a cold climate. To our eyes, their faces may look ugly, but they are a triumph of evolutionary adaptation. Gada. Okay, so that was Neanderthals, so let's talk about Cro-Magnon. Cro-Magnon are named after a rock formation uh, where the remains were found in France. Cro-Magnon are considered to be the first modern, modern humans, Homo sapiens sapiens. And uh, as you can see from the picture, they were larger in terms of height than Neanderthal. We know that Cro-Magnon used sharper, thinner weapons. Uh, they were much more evolved in terms of the way they used things. And of course, if you're going to use rocks for all these things, you know, sometimes you got this. Sometimes I guess there just aren't enough rocks. <laughs> Nothing in this Neanderthal's life could have prepared him for this encounter. The stranger doesn't just look different. He thinks and acts in ways which are quite alien to a Neanderthal. He is a new species of humanity. A Homo sapien, known in Europe as a Cro-Magnon. Seeing is one thing. Comprehending is another. Fear. 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 Halt. Oh. Oh. Halt. Fear. We can't know exactly how Neanderthals reacted to their first sight of Cro-Magnons. But coming from such a sheltered world, it may be that they simply did not understand the significance of what they saw. Okay, so modern humans, we, we think that they started to appear in Africa around 150 to 2000, 200,000 years ago. And they began to migrate out of Africa uh, shortly after that. When we say shortly, about 100,000 years later. Now, many have, uh, many scientists believe they replaced Neanderthals, either through selective breeding or through, uh, you know, conquering them and killing them. There are two theories for how people migrated to other parts of the world. The Out of Africa model says that people became modern humans in Africa and then left and encountered other species throughout the world. The other is the multi-regional, which went out as lesser humans and then evolved from there. 
So if you look at this map, it's going to be talking about human migration. It happened out of Africa. Now, one thing that you need to know is that the multi-regional is not looked upon as favorably by scientists today. Most scientists believe that we uh, evolved to modern human status in Africa and then left to other parts of the world, including coming across the Bering Strait, where Asia and the Americas meet, and settling on uh, in the Americas. What do we know? All right, what were the differences between Neanderthals and modern peoples? You should be able to explain them. Differences in size and brain types. Explain how humans spread across the planet. What are the two theories? Which one is in favor with scientists and which one is not? And why would Cro-Magnon and Neanderthals be rivals? What was their competition?